come, but you'll be able to withstand this storm. And so we ask that this morning we come up for prayer, those who would, those who will, at this time. You might want to come forth, you might want to stay by your seat. Whatever's put on your heart. We all know that God can hear you wherever you are. God knows your frame. He made your frame. He made everything about you. That's why the question is asked, what is man? Thou art mindful of him. For he has made him a little lower than the angels. So when we consider the stars, the moon, the earth, and the work of his fingers, we begin to see that there's God not over just above us, but in us and through us. Let us go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Our Heavenly Father, who not only watches over us, but sustains us, we're kept by your power, not because we've done something so well, or so good. And not because we've been kind or compassionate or loving, but it's because of your sure mercies. Yes. Your compassion every day. For the writer of Lamentation to say your compassion fails not. It is new every morning. Yes. Great is our faithfulness. When we can't even be faithful ourselves at times, you're still faithful. You're faithful to wake us up in the morning. You're faithful to keep the blood running warm in our veins. You're faithful, God. And not only that, you love us. There's not a day that goes by that you don't love us. In fact, you love us even more so today than yesterday. We have so much to be thankful and grateful for. You never forget our needs. You always, always watching over us. And so, Lord, we're just so grateful. So grateful for your loving kindnesses and your tender mercies. What would we do without you, Lord? You order our steps and you keep making ways out of no ways. You love us, Lord, deeply every day. And so as we approach you today, Lord, we come with thankfulness. We come, Lord, with great expectations for we know that you're God who never fails we know that you keep watching over us you don't even slumber or sleep because you're watching over us now Lord there are those who are not well among us we don't have to name them out because you know them you know what we need right now that's that touch that comes from you that assurance that reassures us that you'll never leave us nor forsake us we just need a touch this morning Lord a touch from heaven just a touch just to let us know Lord that you never fail and you're here I every beck and call so even now Lord as you move in this place and in our hearts Lord restore the joy restore the fellowship the communion, Lord, that only you can give. And then, Lord, we're going to be careful to praise your righteous and holy name. Even now, Lord, as we prepare to go to our seats, let us not forget your loving kindnesses. Bless the ones beside the other one. Let them know, Lord, that there is more to this than just today. Let them know that we have a heavenly not made by hands but prepared by you and for this we are thankful we give you all praise and glory now in Jesus name and 
the people of God said together, Amen. 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 Let's go touch somebody.
for those who are 50 and above, today is Jubilee Sunday. We will, we will be meeting at um, the Cheesecake Factory in Fashion Valley. We will also be celebrating birthdays April, May, and June.
words in our heart, but it just may not come out. So anyway, thank you, thank you, just just the same. Now it's a time for a giving.
over at Gobblers, which he had been doing for a number of years, and as to start prayer for the school and so forth, these things we ought to be praying for. And I'm glad the people, Tommy reminded us, he wasn't here last time, but reminded us to pray for the, for the children, in which we, we did uh, last week, uh, because there's someone else who had reminded us, don't forget to, uh, to pray for our children as, as they go back to school. Uh, I think it's more than just a practice. I think we, we ought to be doing those kind of things as, as well. We uh, are going to be blessed this morning and even this, the second service and the first service first quarter, but we're going to step aside this morning, uh, it's for someone else to bring uh, the, the word uh, for particular reasons, but I want to say this, that this man of God, and uh, we know him, uh, Reverend Brown, who has come to be a part of our community here uh, at Mount Moriah, and uh, he has preached before here, he's preached a number of places, he's always been well received, we, we're excited about him because when we're here, we know that he is truly a man of God, and we know that there's a word that's going to come forth. In order to get a preacher to preach, uh, you have to be in a prayerful mode because the enemy is always trying to intercept or cause any confusion that he can. But we want to be spiritually motivated. Can I just remind you just very quickly, when you become a Christian, you become a spiritual being, okay? And, and when you become a spiritual thing, you're not, no longer under earthly patterns and conditions because your citizen is in, in heaven. And it's hard sometimes to, to take that in. Your spiritual being yeah. having a worldly experience. Now before that, you were a worldly being, period. But now that you're spiritual, you're having a worldly experience because you're passing through. So we look when someone comes to preach, we come and bring all the spirit that's within us, not just to encourage, but also so that we might receive what our speaker has for us. So this time we're going to have Reverend Brown come forth at this time. Amen. 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 Reverend Gerald Brown. Amen. 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 You say preach, brother preach. Yeah, yeah. He died for me. 
I don't know about you, but I was a wretch undone. When the song says grateful, come on, you don't have to tell nobody. When the song says grateful, understand what God has done for you. Nobody can tell the story about you like you can. You know you better than anybody else. So I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Are you grateful this morning? Let's rise to our feet. I know that you might be going through something right now. I know that you're dressed in your Sunday best and you came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I just want you to take a moment or a second just to just bow your heads. Uh, if you will, lift your hands towards glory and just say thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. the light of day again. But God has you here. My God, my God, my God. I just want you to understand that we should be grateful this morning. Grateful. We should say thank you. I know that some of us are tired in our bodies. But if you would just begin to praise God where you are, this is a service that has been ordained for God. I don't know why you came, but I came to get a word from the Lord today. I came to hear from God. If you didn't come to hear from God, well, you're still going to hear from Him anyway. Hello? Hallelujah. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy, oh God. We thank you for your angels that are encamped around us, oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for this place of faith, O oh God. For Mount Moriah, O oh God, Christian Church, Lord God. We are thankful, O oh God. We're thankful for the angels, O oh God, that watch for our souls. Lord, we're thankful, O oh God. We're also thankful, God, for every trial, every tribulation. Oh God, we're thankful, O oh God, because we know that it's in our forging and making us into pure gold. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, we pray today, oh God, that you send us a rainbow word, oh God. Yeah. A word that comes from heaven, oh God, for yeah. us. Lord, yeah. Lord, Lord, fall afresh yeah. on each and every one of us. Let us not leave here the same, but let us leave, oh God, even greater in faith. It is in the name of Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, that we pray. We pray and give thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated in heavenly places. I am thankful to our pastor to the angel of this church. Amen. The angel of this church, our pastor and our first lady, Amen. we're thankful for you. Yeah. Somebody's asking the question, well, how do, how do you know, Reverend Brown, that they're the angels of the church? <laughs> well, the Bible tells me so. Yeah. I'm not going to yet. And I'm going to try to be short today because I know that Pastor says I get a little long with it sometimes. But that's okay. In the book of Revelations, and I'm not going there yet, in the book of Revelations, so that you'll know that the pastor is the angel of the church, when John was on the island of Patmos, he sent letters to the angels of the church. Okay. 
The angels of the church were the pastors of those churches who God has charged to look out for my soul and your soul. So when you're dealing and talking with the pastor, you're not just dealing and talking with some other man and or woman, you're dealing with the angel of God. I just want to, that's just a teaching moment. I'll give that to you for free. Amen. This word that we are going to talk about today started some 40 years ago. I know that you say 40 years ago, Reverend Brown, you still look young and debonair. It couldn't be 40 years ago. But it was 40 years ago. I was walking down the streets of Washington, D.C. And there was a bumper sticker. I'm not going to tell you my whole word today yet. But there was a bumper sticker. And on the bumper sticker, now, you folks in the Air Force and the Army, I don't want you to be mad at me, okay? But the bumper sticker said, sticker said, Marines, the modern day centurion. You're going to understand this in just a few moments, all right? All right, all right. And so that sticker stayed with me. Because I had a little biblical knowledge then, and I had heard of this person called the centurion. And you know, raised in the family, and you get to hear Bible stories and everything else. But a modern day centurion. All right, all right. Today's message is titled, Just Say the Word. And no greater faith. The first piece of fabric of the foundation of being a Christian. Is faith. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Hebrew 11 6 says, without faith, somebody say this for me, it is impossible to please God. How many of you here want to please God today? I'm going to ask that question again because I should see every hand in the place. And yes, I'm front, okay? I should see every hand in the place because all of us should want to please God. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Mark tells us in the first chapter, 16 verse, he who believeth and baptized will be Say, if you've been baptized, the Bible says you will be saved. The purpose of today's message, okay, is to give you greater faith. The purpose of today's message is if you haven't been baptized, and I know it's always the same, seems like the same, but somebody that hasn't been baptized, here's an opportunity for you to be saved. He who believeth and baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe, well, I can say this, but the Bible says it, will be damned or condemned. Belief is the outward manifestation of the heart, which causes you to move towards action. <clears throat> to move towards action. If I could just have everybody stand up for just a second. Just a quick second. It will take more. It's going to take longer when we just want to do that too. Just stand up. Now, I want you to look at me. Alright. And sit down. Alright. Stand up. Some of y'all get more excited, but this is what we do in the Marine Corps, we exercise. Now sit down. 
Now let me just say to you, you just not act, exercise an action of faith. Yes, that's right. Right? That's right? How is that? Because you stood up. One, you were obedient. Thank you for that, Deacon. You stood up, and then all 280 pounds of beauty and that's me. That's I don't know y'all. <laughs> Sit down on this chair. You believe that this chair had been built to hold you. Amen. Yeah. That is exercising your faith. Have you ever saw a chair that you said, nah, I don't think I ought to yep. sit at the well? <laughs> so believe in the outward manifestation of the, of the heart, which causes you to act. Now faith. Somebody say that with me. Now faith. That was now faith because you believe in right now that you can sit down. So now faith is the substance. The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Work with me now. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the what? And what do we want today? The word. Just say the word. For those of you that's confused, I'm kind of a preacher teacher. Alright? Or a teacher preacher. And I want you to be active as a part of this. And as you already recognize, I'm kind of loud. because my mama told me I had a big mouth. Right. So, I'm loud. Right. But please don't take it personally. Just turn down your ear and get your right. In the book of Matthew, the 8th chapter. Wait, we're going to go there. Go someplace else first. In the book of John, you should know this. John 1. What we want today is we want to hear a word from the Lord. Yeah. So let me just say to you that in the beginning, the Bible says, was the what? Word. And the word was what? Yeah. Come on, I need to hear y'all. This, this is my bad here, so y'all got to get a little bit loud so I can hear you this here. And the word was with God. And he was with God in the beginning. And through him, all things, all things, before these chairs were ever conceived in the natural, they were conceived in the spiritual realm. God gave the thought for these chairs. Before the world was in existence, God had the thought in his mind for these and all things. Before you were conceived in your mother's womb and you were clean in your daddy's eye. I'm being careful. I hear you. God knew you. And he created this day for you to be in this place. Somebody say, where is he going? He's going somewhere. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. Nothing was made that has been made. So there's nothing that they could think of to make that God had already thought about. Are you with me so far? In him was what? That's life. He breathed ruas yes. into you, the breath of life. All right. In him was life, and that life 
was the light of all mankind. We were once in darkness, sir. But now you've been brought into his marvelous light. By what? The word. The word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. The word of God. And we're going to go on to the, drop down to the 14th. Yeah. I'm just trying to build a foundation here, okay? And then the what? Word. The word became flesh. How does word become flesh? Only God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. Jesus walked. amongst us. When we talk about the omnipresence of God, that right here we are sitting in heavenly places. You didn't have to bring Jesus with you. Jesus was already here. Are oh, y'all gonna hear me? He was also in that car when that person cuts you off. He was also when your husband got on your last nerve and your thoughts ran through your head, I know that's not going to be good to me. You know, we still have marriage counseling in here for folks and he was there. He was there when your boss said something to you and you just couldn't bear it and you got in your car and you said all manners of things. And so he dealt amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only Son, the one and the only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. There is a story, a parable, a truth, if you will. So we have we just not established the word, did we not? Let me go one further, one step further. All of you Bible scholars understand Genesis, right? That God did what in Genesis? Say, say what, brother? He created the heavens and earth. And how did he do that? He spoke the what? The word. Into existence. In the eighth chapter of the book of Matthew, and when I'm going to pick it up here, but in that eighth chapter, I'll pick it up at the fifth verse. But before that fifth verse, Jesus is coming down from the Sermon on the Mount, and the crowd is following Jesus, and. Then following him, he comes to a leper who has a withered hand. Jesus here again asks the man, does he want to be cleansed? Do you want to be clean? Just like he asked us, one day, do we want to be clean? All right, all right. Jesus reached out his hand and he touched the man. You and the man and I had to say, I'm willing. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. I'm willing, he said, to be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. And then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. He said, in another version of that, he said, offer a wave offering. And there's something when your hands withered. And he just said, offer a wave 
offering. Now when you go to the Padre game, you see them waving like this. And is that right, Brother, Brother Derek? You know, when you take the, the, the kids and the saints out there, they waving their hands. And you watch the wave just flow all the way over. Can I get some people just to wave your hand this morning if God has cleansed you? Come on, put your hands up there. Wave them in the air. Like you just don't care. All right, you know the song. But then Jesus, <laughs> then Jesus goes on, past this to the, to the fifth verse. After he's healed this man, he comes down the hill to a place called Capernaum. And, and Capernaum means Nahal village. It was a place where miracles went forth. It was a place where he cast out some demons. It was a place where he met Peter's mother-in-law, uh, Capernaum. And when you look up Nahum village, Nahum, who you remember, was in the Old Testament, come on, Bible scholars, as one of the 12 minor prophets. Nahum prophesied on the destruction of Nineveh. That's right, that's right. Are, are, are you with me? Uh -huh. I know you said, what does this have to do with anything? I just want to just set up the stage of where he's at. Jesus has just now preached a sermon on the mountain. He's just now healed the, the man with leprosy. He's come down now to Capernaum. Nahum means comforter. In the Hebrew, from the root, Nahum. And Jesus found himself in a place of comfort. Jesus himself in this place was the comforter to the people. Work with me now. In Nahum, you may remember this line. The Lord is good. He is a refuge in the time of trouble. Then there came unto him a centurion, besieging him and saying, Lord, my servant is homesick with palsy. Palsy is a type of being paralyzed. You may have known some folks that have been paralyzed that could not move at all. But along with palsy, kind of like epilepsy, the person would have terrible tremors. They would shake yeah, 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 uncontrollably yeah, yeah. and not be able to do anything, anything out of control. Have you ever felt like you were paralyzed in your position in life? Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt like things were out of control yes. and no one could get it and no matter how much you talk, no matter how much you pray, it was just there, it was there. The Bible says he was greedily, he was greedily tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy. I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. But speak the what? The word. Brothers and sisters, children, all we need today is to hear a word from the Lord. We've been listening to everything else, but seeking a word from the Lord is what's going to move us to where God wants us. I want you to understand that heaven and earth shall pass away. But unless you get that word of God in you, okay, I hope I'm not putting nobody to sleep. I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only. My servant shall be healed, for I am a man under authority. 
Are you with me now? I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go. And he go. Go. And to another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, do this. And he does it. I want you to understand the position of this centurion. A centurion was over uh, other soldiers. A centurion was somebody that had worked himself from, up from the bottom. If you look up the word, he was a common man. Common man. I, I know y'all, I know we were raw priesthood and everything else like that. I always have to look over my shoulder and see what he's saying back there because everybody knows the pastor. But he was a common man who worked himself up through the Roman ranks. And he became a centurion. And when he said he was a man in authority, he had over 6,000 troops up under him. Yeah. yeah. 6,000. Then he had 10 cohorts that were also under him. And he was the disciplinary person. He was kind of like the sergeant major or the master chief or the master gunnery sergeant. What do they call him in the Air Force? The master sergeant. You know, he was kind of like, like that general that walked around. He had power. And so when he said, stand up, lock your body, Marines will refer to this, you stood there and locked your body. When he said to you, don't move, guess what you did? You didn't move. If he said to you, don't scratch, and there was a flea that was biting you, you didn't do that. I just want you to understand that because he was a man in power. And he was assigned to this area, and he was watching over and protecting and making sure that he kept order for the Roman Empire in Capernaum. Are you with me? The centurion in a legion were arranged with a complicated order of ranks. This varied in authority and responsibility from top to bottom. There was little actual difference in between most of the centurion's ranks. However, with the exception of the first rank of the centurion, and he was the officer that ruled over military tribunals and legion commanders, with the sheer focus on war. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to let you know who Jesus was talking to. They formed the backbone of the legion and were responsible for enforcing discipline. They received much higher pay and a greater share of the spoils. Yeah. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that follow, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. What are you talking about? Jesus? What do you mean you haven't found so great a faith in Israel? Understand that the centurion was a Gentile. Hello. He wasn't like everybody else. He wasn't Jewish. He was a Gentile. And Jesus said, wait a minute now. In all of Israel, I'm dealing with this Gentile. And this Gentile seems to have more faith than what you do. Or what y'all do. Because he didn't say, come to my house. Because you know, you call pastor and say, pastor, can you come over? <laughs> my dog is sick. Now I don't. Now you Peter lovers and dog lovers and cats lovers, don't get mad at me. I'm just giving an example. My dog is sick. Could you come over and, and lay hands on my dog and, and pray for him? And the pastor says, I'm going to pray for your dog. And your dog will be well. And you ain't going to have to take it down here and spend $3,000 to get a shot. Because y'all know that I'm going to say pay now, right? Oh, veterinarians are high. Didn't mean to go there, but yes. But a call pastor just say, Pastor, pray. Why? Because he is the man of God, the angel that is able to connect with God at a moment's notice. See, and I'm talking about you now, so. See, most of us, no, let me just say, I don't know most of y'all. 
some of us, we dibble and dab. You're messing with them, Brown. Okay. You know, we come to church and we, hallelujah. Pass me around, the other way around. Hallelujah. Hey, girl, you know, yeah. So we dibble and dab. Pastor's not dibbling and dab. His election, he's called and he's assured that he's always in connection with God. Jesus was always in connection with the Father. Maybe the centurion, the centurion who we're looking at, even though we see him as a, a, a soldier, but he was also a man of great compassion. Yeah. All right. All right. See, he came for his boy servant. He didn't have to do that. But he came and he came to Jesus for his servant. And he said, I know that I'm not worthy. I'm a Gentile. And you know, some other person, they say, well, what do we be Gentile? What do I have to do with dogs? But he said, hey, I'm not worthy. He came to that place of humbling himself. Many of us don't want to humble ourselves. Yeah. If my people which are called by my name would what? Humble themselves. And do what? Pray. Pray. And do what? Seek my faith. And do what? Turn from their evil way. And then what? Come on now, preach with me now. And then what? And then what? What? Hear? Hear from what? That means the word is coming from heaven. Right. Hello, somebody. The word is coming from heaven, and he will do what then? The reason why most of us, I'm sorry, let me stop. The reason why some of us are not experiencing all that God has is because of the fact that we won't humble ourselves. We won't seek his face. We'll pray only when there's a trial or tribulation that has come up in our lives. Yeah. Then we call on Him. Yeah. Then we call everybody. We want everybody to pray. Uh, we want everybody to do everything, but God is pointing right at us. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. I didn't come to offend anybody. But Jesus said He came to offend everybody. Yeah. That I might offend. Because see, I want to help you. So here's this centurion who has humbled himself. Yes. And his very action of coming to Jesus was a prayer. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yes. Coming to Jesus and humbling himself, he put himself in a dangerous spot. Yes. But he recognized the greatness in Jesus. Yes. Maybe he had just heard Jesus in the Sermon on the Mountain. Yes. Maybe he heard, blessed are the poor. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yes. Maybe he heard him Blessed when men persecute you for my name's sake. Yeah. Maybe he heard, love your enemies as yourself. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe he heard that. Maybe he had watched this man who had walked up and down and how people talked about him. How he did miracles. Maybe the centurion had seen all of that. Maybe because he was attached to a, to a Jewish building in, 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 in Capernaum. Maybe he had heard about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Maybe he had heard about what happened at Mount Moriah. You're not listening to me. You're not hearing me now. Maybe he heard about what happened at Mount Moriah. Maybe he heard about Abraham taking up Isaac up there to sacrifice him. Maybe he heard about God and of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the ram in the bush that God provided. Maybe you heard about God delivering them through 400 years out of Egypt. Carrying them across the Red Sea. Maybe you heard about all of that. See, he heard about it. You heard about it. He acted. So we find the centurion not only a man that has humbled himself, not only a man that has prayed, but a man that is committed. And not for himself. 
We find him as a man of compassion. And so when he comes to Jesus, Jesus just marvels. I am amazed. Wow. This guy here. I'm sure that he has the best doctors. I'm sure that he has everything that he needs. But yet he's acting on his faith. On his faith. Believing that Jesus is the one that can heal. And because he walked in faith, and he walked by faith and not by sight, what happened? Come on, somebody. What happened? Don't be afraid. What happened? Okay, thank you for that side. What happened? What happened? The servant was healed. When was he healed? Tomorrow? Right then. Most of us can receive healing for our souls if we act in faith, if we walk in faith. You remember the last example that I gave from the last time I preached some time ago? About just closing out, closing your eyes and just stepping out? You remember that example? It still applies here. Sometimes you just got to go. You got to fight your way. You know why people came up for prayer this morning? Because they fight their way. I'm, I'm fighting my way through what everybody else thinks. Centurion, I'm fighting my way. I don't care what the rest of my folks think. What my legions think. I've got to get to Jesus. There was a woman with an issue of blood who had been there all her life. I think 12 years, the Bible says. And she fought her way through the crowd. And she said, I just want to touch the hem of his garment. Yes. Yes. Come on, saints of the Most High God. Who touched him with the words that he spoke? Who touched him? He knew who touched him. But just for y'all's sake, so it can be written down, who touched me? I felt something lead me when she touched me. When's the last time you had a touch of the Lord? When's the last time you were unafraid, unashamed to call on his name? When's the last time that you humbled yourself and pushed everybody else and everything else aside for him? He is the omnipresent, omnipotent God. Omniscient. He knows what you're thinking before you think it. Hello, somebody. Before you speak it out of your mouth, he already knows what you're going to say. So there's nothing that you're going to say that's going to surprise him because he made you. Thank you, Lord. So he knew that the centurion was going to be there. And he knew that the centurion had to be there for your sake and for my sake. So that he could have an example of no greater faith. No greater faith. Jesus was stunned by the depth of the officer and his faith. Both Luke and Matthew talk about this incident. I would tell you to reread again because we all want to have great faith. This centurion, this Gentile, was an illustration of who we are to be. He also reminded us that man looks at the outside. We look at the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. Right. 
Doesn't matter what I think. How you look on the outside. But understanding that God is looking at your heart. Your intents and your motives. Behind everything that you do and say. And to make it easy for you, he has said, say what I need you to say. Everything that you need is in this. Your whole life is in this. If you say this, if you meditate on this, this Bible, day and night, all through the day, 24 hours of the day. I'm going to quit for now, but I'm not finished. If you would meditate on this, day and night, you would put this in your heart that you might not sin against him. Put what, Reverend? Put the word in your heart. You'll find yourself speaking in the other people's life. Hello? Okay, can, I, can I just say that again? God wants you to get the word in you so you can speak into other people's lives. Pastor, I'm going to tell them, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you know, because they'll, they'll beat me up after this. It's not all about you. The trials and tribulations that you've gone through, it wasn't all about you. As I said the last time I was here, you've been called to be a servant. So here the centurion, who with over all of these 6,000 men, understood his position as a servant. So much so that he was going to take care of his servant. There is a leadership trait, a characteristic that the Marine Corps teaches us, is leaders know your people and look out for their welfare. Pastors, brothers, husbands, wives, know your family, know each other, look out for their welfare. Pray for people when you can't even see them. Pray for folks when you can't even see them. Y'all young niggas that want to get married. Okay, I'm sitting with you on my bounds now. Are you young men that want to get married? You know how you are. Start praying for that man now. Hello? And start praying that God starts conforming you to be right for that person. If you would do that, I know my only me. I'm still trying to get you to, to be on. John Piper once quoted Billy Graham said, God will not reward fruitfulness. He will reward faithfulness. The centurion was faithful. I want to grow up to be like that. Seeking will you to be faithful. Finally, brothers and sisters, 2 Chronicles 7.14 says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Michael says this, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. The centurion, Jesus, showed you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Of you. Somebody asked a question. What does the Lord require of me? Yeah. Somebody asked a question. What does the Lord require of me? What does the Lord require of me? I, I know it's, it's hard to say me, okay? But I, I'm going to ask again. Somebody asked a question. What does the Lord require of me? What does the Lord require of me? I, oh, I'm glad you asked that question. Let me tell you. <laughs> to act justly. To love mercy and to walk humble before your God. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your Lord. It's the word, folks. It's the word. And if you follow the word, the word will lead you to great faith. May God bless you.
and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good word. It's morning. It's the word. Amen. It's an opportunity for us even now to, as we receive the word, to act on the word. The word is there. It's nigh thee, even, even by yourself or near you, is the word of God. We want to extend the privileges of the church over the doors of the church at this time. There may be someone here who's never made a conscious decision to receive God, receive His Son, and to go by the rhema word, the word that is spoken by God to us through His word, and that word being the Bible. We're going to look now and try to encourage you, if you're not a child of God, to become a child of the living God. It'll be the best decision that you've ever made up to this time. To receive him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We're going to ask now those who come, those who come, those who are going to sing, but if it's on your heart to become a child of God, I want you to come up and have a seat. If you're already a Christian but looking for a church home, we invite you to come up as well. I want you to come in.
Lord, you've been so faithful. Amen. Brown, you know, what our theme is for this year, when we look at that being faithful and the just shall live by, by faith. Yes. You know, he has a unique way of bringing the word. We call it making the word relevant for today. And, and that's the way that preachers should bring the word so that we can both understand it and, and, and still be able to move forward in the word because it's the word that changes things. Thank you, Reverend Brown. God bless you. Amen. 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 You endeavor to, to stay on time. I want to say great is our faithfulness, but it doesn't work for you. Amen. We're going, to, we're going to very quickly take up our, our final offering, our benevolence. I want you to give amen. Because God has blessed you to give. Ushers will be passing the basket from the rear forward at this time. Amen. Now, we all getting happy and excited about the message. You need to be just as happy and excited about giving if you really understand the word. If you understand the word, we get excited about all of worship. Amen.
All right, if you greeted an opportunity to greet someone that you didn't come with, because we're getting ready to dismiss, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, Reverend Gerald Brown is going to be at the doorway, but he's also going to be bringing something in the 11 o'clock service. So you want to get back from your refreshments and come on back in. A amen? amen? So we'll be looking forward to seeing you. But make sure you greet somebody <clears throat> that you didn't come in with today. All right? Can I get that right there? Can I get you a smile there? Ah, there you go. There she go. And I'm going to keep on mentioning that, that you're going to have to use that solo voice that God has given you. And, and Nisi looked in the back. I'm talking to your daughter. You know, <laughs> and, 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 we're not, and we know we're not talking to Edna about singing, so she ain't she, she, she back here. But, but, but anyway, we're looking for blessing. And. <clears throat> I want y'all to continue to do whatever position you have in the church. Let's do it thus unto God, unto the Lord. Okay, amen. And not unto man for what we do. Because he is ultimately who we want to please. And wanting to please is God. Amen. All right. I'm glad we didn't come in uh, like and didn't remain the same. What's that song, y'all? Y'all? Yo. Well, don't don't play with me. <laughs> Just a little, a little bit of that, because we can remember those words. <laughs> we we can just a, just a little bit. All of us can sing that as we prepare to dismiss. Heard to say. 